parent functions. And here is where I want you to be looking at it on a graphing calculator and see if you can come up with the rule. Our first rule is f of x plus c. When we see this, f of x represents the parent function. Parent function. So f of x can be any graph. It could be our x squared, our x cubed, or the absolute value of x, or anything else you want it to be. And we have plus c. Plus c is our transformation. The question here today is what does that transformation do? So go ahead and graph these three equations on your graphing calculator and copy them to the graphs in front of you. x squared minus 2 is going to look like that x cubed plus 4 is going to be something like this. An absolute value of x plus 1 will look something like that, where that is at the point zero, 01. Our question is, how were these transformations? What did the plus c part do? Negative 2 plus 4 plus 1. This should be an easy one. If the c was greater than 0, graph goes up. And if c was less than 0, graph went down. Just like what happens when we had x plus 4 moved our graph up 4. Now notice our function. Our plus c, the transformation, is inside our function. What's going to happen this time? Go ahead and graph these with your calculator and copy our graphs. x minus 2 squared is going to look something like this x plus 4 cubed will look something like this. And the absolute value of x plus 1 will be something like this. How did our graphs change? It shifted left and right. If c is greater than 0 or a positive number, it goes left. And when c was less than 0 or a negative number, it goes right. This is also something we've done in the past. Now we have our transformation times our function. It kind of works as a slope. Remember if we had y equals 2x, it works as a slope. And here it's going to work the same way. So 3x squared. Our graph is going to be much skinnier this time, or taller. So we have the point 0, 0, 1, 3, negative 1, 3. And 2, 12, which is way up here, negative 2, 12. Now look at this graph. Compared to what we had, it got scared, skinnier, or it got taller, which is something to remember. Now, 1 half of x cubed. Now, when we have 1 half, look at what happens to our x cubed. We have the point 0, 0, 1, 1 half, and 2, 4. Same with the negatives, negative 1, 1, negative a half, and negative 2, negative 4. This graph is now shorter, it's more condensed, a little wider. And when we have 2 times our absolute value of x, we have the point 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4. Notice our slope increased. This graph got a lot steeper. And so when our transformation, or that c value, is outside our function, 
if C is greater than 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, it stretches in the Y direction. Which just means it gets kind of, the Y's get taller for every X. If C is less than 1, like the fraction, it compresses. And it has to be between 0 and 1, and it compresses in the Y direction. Essentially, it makes your graph taller or shorter. Now that c value is within our function. Our transformation is inside our function. So pay careful attention to the notation of these functions. It's going to work somewhat similar to the last slide. If we go ahead and graph them, we'll see how that happens. If we graph our first function, we have the point 0, 0, 1, 1 fourth, 2, 1, 4, 4. So notice this graph is getting much, much wider in the direction of our x's. Our next graph, we would have 0, 0, 1, 27. So, this one is going to look a lot like this. It's not a very nice graph. And our final one, if we have the point 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, it actually kind of looks the same as the last one, right? And what's really happening here is now we're working in the x direction. They're very, very similar. And these two I find the most confusing to keep straight. But it won't matter as much this time around. If c is greater than 1, it compresses in the y x direction. And if c is between 0 and 1, it stretches in the x direction. And so they're kind of interrelated. Because down for this first graph, we stretched in the x direction, which means we compressed in the y direction. And then for this next one, we compressed in the x direction, which stretched it in the y direction. And so the last slide and this slide, they're very interchangeable. They really work together. Our final two transformations are negating our function. So if our negative is outside the function, so notice how these are all written with that negative outside, how does this change it? Let's see, plug in values or graph. We would still get 0, 0, but if x is 1, now we're going to get negative 1. x is 2, now we're going to get negative 4. So, think about what the parent function looks like versus what we have now. Same thing here. If x is 0, 0, x is 1, we now get negative 1. Negative 1 gives us positive 1. What's happening to our graphs? How are they being transformed? And this final one is going to look like that, where the point is at 0, 0. My graph's a little off. But if we think about it, what happened? The original was up here. The original was in the blue. The original was in our purple. What all happened? And they flipped or reflected over the x-axis. So if the neg negative sign is outside our function, we flip over our x-axis. 
since this correlates to the last slide, when we put the negative sign inside the function, so look at these notations, what do we think is going to happen? And I bet you already guessed it. So with the parabola, it's going to actually look the same. Over here, 0, 0, if x is 1, we get negative one. What's happening to these graphs? And here, it's actually going to look the same. Zero, zero, if we plug in one, we get one. Here, it's actually much harder to tell, except this middle graph is our biggest clue. We know when our negative sign's outside the function, it flips over the x-axis. So if it's inside our function, it reflects over the y-axis. And so with our two n graphs, the um, quadratic and the absolute value, you don't really notice that reflection, but it is there. Finally, on this last page, it's just a summary of all our rules in one spot. And it's really important that you get to understand these rules, and the best way to do it is to play around on graphing calculators.